G'day everybody, it's Dave from Wing Chun Mind Force. First off, very Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, Christmas Day was yesterday for me, but it could be uh, Christmas Day for a lot of my friends in the States. Maybe, but maybe other areas. Um, <clears throat> I hope you're having a great time. I hope Santa brought you some great presents. And I hope maybe somebody got one of these, the ultimate Wing Chun gift. So this is the start of a series I'm making about the wooden dummy, also known as the wooden man, also known as the Muk Yan Chong. Forgive my Cantonese. Uh, this wonderful apparatus um, has been around for a long time. And um, originally the, uh, the stories go that the Shaolin Temple had had uh, wooden dummies of all sorts of types and it sounded as if they were um, sort of fighting devices, maybe they had chains in them or some kind of system where the, the student to prove how proficient they were they'd have to go through and, and fight their way through this wooden dummy hall. Um, so there's probably masters behind the dummy doing things. Very interesting stuff, uh, been done quite interestingly in um, different martial arts movies and TV series. The original uh, Kung Fu series in the 70s had Kwai Chang Kane having to fight his way through the wooden dummy hall to get to the, uh, the really big thrill, which was branding himself on the red hot um, urn so he got a dragon on one side and a tiger on the other. Thankfully, we've dropped that out of the system. And then he runs out in the snow and goes, you know. But, um, there's uh, Kung Fu Panda has a scene where he's getting the panda's getting beaten up by all sorts of dummies. I'm sure there'll be a Jackie Chan scene where there's a dummy hall. Uh, he certainly plays with the dummy. Like, <clears throat> I know there's videos of Bruce Lee using the dummy, but I can't. He doesn't use it in his movies. Okay, as you can see, the dummy's made out of timber. It uh, it's hung on a freestanding rack. Now there's all sorts of fancy ones turning up that stand on a bit of a, um, a platform down there um, and hooking it up to walls. The original dummies were apparently planted in the ground so they were twice the length of that and they were solid. So there was no real movement in them. Uh, some indications from sites trying to find the history of the dummy indicate that the dummy might have um, been made on the mast of a ship originally. I sort of like that idea, it's a bit romantic. Fits in with that whole um, red junk idea. But essentially what it is is a like a dirty great big fence post. Uh, usually hardwood made of the same sort of um, weight as a human. So this one of mine weighs about 80 kilos. If I was 18, that'd be the same weight as me. But um, they can be any sort of size and weight you like. Uh, this beautiful dummy was given to me by my dear friend, Ivan Howe. And it was like all my Christmases came at once, literally. He said to me one day after training, um, would you like a dummy? And I sort of like went, well, does the bear shit in the woods? I think I would like a dummy, what are you talking about? And um, took me out in the shed and he had a dummy out there and he said, this is a gift. So I was stoked. I wasn't really ready to train then, but I treasured it and I still do. And um, I regularly wax my dummy. I've got this very cool, uh, like a timber finish. It's orange smelling wax got this from a place called Stanthorpe, a little country town. I got a couple of bottles of this. And every month or two I get out a rag and I just lovingly wax on, wax off. off. <laughs> uh, so you've got the two arms. So there's a little bit of play in them. Uh, you can see they've been made <clears throat> um, on a lathe. They've been turned by some expert. And this angle um, 
that's common in our lineage. I, I know that some other lineages use a wider arm and I just can't remember what that's about. Somehow I think it's this is like the Cantonese version and the mainland dummies have a wider arm. And then there's the central arm which represents a lower arm. And then there's the leg. Now traditionally this is made from a um, tree root apparently, one with a natural bend in it. This one Ivan made from a cherry tree which I thought was pretty appropriate being you know cherry blossom being our flower our tree our representation of um, eternal springtime and it's quite shapely and it's done the job stayed in one piece now these um, if you've been doing the dummy for a while you know all this stuff but just for those who've never really looked up looked at the dummy up close it's got these wooden pegs um, just get one out. That one comes out alright. Right, so it's it's nicely turned there and then it's um, well that's quite square. And there's the hole and it goes right back deep inside out the back there. Now on good hardware wood like this this is a real bugger to carve through. I had a, when I put this leg in, when I originally got the dummy it didn't have a hole for the leg. And so I asked a carpenter mate and he goes, oh yeah, no worries mate, I'll knock it up in a few minutes. So he started working away with chisels and about three quarters of an hour later he's swearing and cursing. He goes, bloody hell this wood's hard. And he chopped his way through, God bless him, and he made it on just the right angle. And um, so that's that's how they're held in. Now, the funny thing is when you first get a dummy, if it's set up right, you'll find that all the weight's on the top here, and down the bottom is just a support. And when I first got it, I I couldn't work out what was going on. I thought, you know, surely it should be really solid on both, but I discovered that no, it's better like that, and it actually moves up and down pretty easy. And whether this is old school or whether it's just something we've worked out but we tend to think that's a good idea because when I get to the parts where I start demonstrating the dummy um, if you're using the wrong force and you're not connecting with the center of the dummy the dummy tends to slide up and down quite a bit once you start to really do the right mindset you'll find that um, it uh, it stays reasonably still um, yeah, all right, I'll just pause there. Okay, um, a couple of other cool dummy orientated things. Um, this is the first dummy book I bought for $20.95, which was quite a bit. <laughs> so I bought it in 1998. Uh, it's written by Master Yip Chun and technical advisor was Master Lung Ting. So um, it, it was the first time, this is before, well the internet was around, but before I started using the internet and before we really had any um, YouTube videos out there like the ones I'm making. Um, it's sort of like a photographic step by step and it's very good and it's, and it's Master Yip Man so it's sort of classic. Well, it is classic. And you can see his dummy, which I'm pretty sure still exists there in Hong Kong at Seagong School. Um, or it exists somewhere. Anyway, um, there's all sorts of instructions there from Master Yip and um, from Loon Ting. Um, I, not being rude, but I, I tend to just listen to what my teachers tell me, but you know, after many years you can sort of you know read things and think oh yeah that's not a bad idea um, but we have luckily <coughs> this wonderful book uh, Sigong Chu Shong Tin's Book of Wing Chun Volume 2 I've taken the dust cover off it because I don't really like dust covers much they annoy me and um, this covers the dummy and the weapons so um, 
you've got pages and pages and pages of wisdom from uh, Sigong Chu Shong Tin talking about the dummy and his dummy section in the, the six form video which you must have if, you, if you're serious you've really got to get that get the English translation version for years we just you know watched listening to the Chinese one not really understanding anything much but picking up ideas but the English version's out it's well translated you really must have that, but that his dummy section is brilliant, and um, you know there's a heck of a lot there. So I'm not trying to teach you stuff that he didn't teach, but I'm just giving you Dave's version of the dummy as I've learnt from my teachers. This was the uh, the pinup from that book, which is super cool. I've really got to get this framed up on my wall. Of dear old master Yip Man, um, training on the dummy. I like the way he's got like a tea towel or something wrapped around it, a little bit of rope. When you punch it, I mean, you don't really try to smack it super hard. You'll see anyway, I'll get into that, how we hit it. Um, Alright, so I just... I've got a, a list that I, I put up on my, um, my wall for years now since I first started the dummy, I guess what year is it, 2010 now, I guess I've been practicing the dummy for close to 10 years um, and I just sort of collated all the, the things um, uh, I was taught by my teacher Richard Antonini um, by Ivan Howe um, by other people who told me things but Richard was really excellent the way he taught me the dummy um, very thorough so I'll just, I'll just read out this list. We'll cover these things in the next series of videos. I don't know how many videos this will be. The dummy's quite a long form. I'm not going to demonstrate it now. This is just a sort of an intro, but um, this, is, this is some ideas that we'll be going through. I call this Kung Fu for Dummies. Get it? Always the body doing it as if arms not there. Interesting. Always connecting my centre to the dummy's centre. Practice a jump dummy very gently as if practicing with a little child. Hmm? That doesn't make sense, does it? Don't anticipate contacting the body or the arms. Don't crowd yourself. Learn your distances. This represents an opponent. This represents some dude, some bad guy, some drunken idiot. Somebody else. And um, yeah, this is the most marvelous training device where we put into practice everything we learn in our Wing Chun, all of Sil Nim Dao, all of Chum Q, all of Bill G we can express it on the dummy. I won't go into too much about how it's all made because I will be telling you in the next series of, of episodes I'll be telling you uh, all about this thing. Okay, um, this one it's from the translation of Sigung's book uh, Cumulate force to contact points and the centre of the dummy with mind force. Okay, that's what Seagong's advice was. Now, it's an unusual use of the word cumulate, but it's, it's right. Cumulate means build up. That's why cumulus clouds are built up clouds. Cumulate means, as I've said, if you've been watching my videos about Yi, bring all your force and all your weight to a point. That's cumulating the force. So when you touch the dummy, all of your weight should be in that point of contact. We're not leaning on it, not climbing up on top of it, just mentally it's all there, it's accumulated. And so you accumulate force to the contact points where you touch the dummy and also to the centre of the dummy. Always working in circles and spheres. It's a concept of Wing Chun, circles and spheres. There's lots of pivots in the form. You all know the pivots from Chum Q. 
Um, and if you came from International Wing Chun, we used to talk about pivoting a lot. We used to just call that pivoting, always pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. That all came from the dummy and Chum Q. Sifu put it together as a bit of a fast, fast track how to fight system, which really worked damn well. Um, don't worry at all about affecting the dummy. Another one. Well, are they supposed to beat the crap out of it? No, don't worry at all about affecting the dummy. It will happen if you concentrate on softness. And that's the key I want you to remember through all this, every video. Softness, you know, not trying hard, uh, being gentle as if practicing with a baby. This is quite different to the, the take you'll get from a lot of um, Wing Chun um, styles, whatever, practitioners. And I'm not saying they're wrong in that, you know, if you're a hard stylist, beating up a great big lump of wood is going to toughen you up. If you, can, if you can slam a great big lump of wood, then, you know, some scrawny pencil neck idiot who's attacking you or some great muscle bound idiot is going to be softer than a lump of wood so it's still doing you some good but it's not really good Wing Chun, it's not internal Wing Chun. Lastly this is a quote from Sigum. I haven't written where I got it from but I think it must be his first book of Wing Chun. Wing Chun doesn't have defense only attack. Wing Chun's techniques are purely for attack. When we attack, we also block. So our attacks are blocks intrinsically. Um, Lin Sil Dai Da, simultaneous attack and defense. This is the core concept behind the dummy form. Right? This is the core concept behind the dummy form. Simultaneous attack and defense. And one of the simplest ideas I got from Sigung many years ago watching one of his videos from Susanna Ho I think um, he just said as soon as we touch somebody they're off balance you know we affect their structure as it were we affect their balance their spine and so we sort of make them weak as soon as we touch them so we don't really worry about trying to block and do this do that we just go whoop and crush them some might say like a maggot. I prefer to say something nice like blowfly or a Christmas beetle. I never crush Christmas beetles. They're special. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it at that. Um, Merry Christmas once again. Look forward to seeing you maybe for a New Year's Eve video or something like that. Okay. Please subscribe, as everyone says. Please subscribe, ding the bell. Um... Tell your friends, share, make some comments down below, give me a thumbs up and um, see you soon.